When you press the power button on a Linux machine, something almost magical happens behind the scenes. A chain reaction begins, a carefully orchestrated sequence that transforms raw hardware into a fully working operating system. Today, we're going to explore this journey step by step in a way that's simple, visual, and absolutely fascinating. The moment power flows into your computer, the firmware comes alive. Depending on your machine, this will be either BIOS or UEFI. Think of it as the system's gatekeeper, the very first code that runs before anything else. Its job is to perform quick hardware checks, called POST or Power On Self Test. It checks your RAM, CPU, keyboard, disks, making sure everything needed for booting is alive and ready. Once these checks pass, BIOS or UEFI looks for something called a bootloader. The bootloader is like a bridge between your hardware and your operating system. In Linux systems, this is usually GRUB2. BIOS or UEFI scans your configured devices, your SSD, hard disk or USB, and loads the first stage of GRUB into memory. Next comes GRUB's moment. GRUB presents the familiar Linux boot menu, but it does much more than that. Internally, GRUB loads its configuration file, detects installed kernels, and prepares the system environment. Once ready, it hands over control to the real star of the show, the Linux kernel. As soon as the kernel loads, the system comes to life. The kernel detects hardware like USB controllers, storage devices, network interfaces, GPUs, essentially waking up every component one by one. But the kernel cannot mount your real file system yet, so it begins by loading a temporary environment called initRamphis, a mini file system stored in memory that contains just enough tools to help the kernel mount your actual root file system. Once the kernel mounts your original root file system, the one stored on your SSD or HDD, the system transitions from temporary boot-up mode to your real Linux environment. With everything in place, the kernel starts the init system, which is usually system D on most modern distros. This is where your Linux system expands from a skeleton to a fully running OS. System D launches essential services like networking, audio, system logs, display manager, and background tasks. It follows its dependency tree, starting services in the most efficient order. Finally, when all services are ready, System D activates your target, which is like a run level. For desktop systems, this is the graphical target, bringing you to your login screen. And just like that, within a few seconds, you're staring at a beautiful Linux desktop, the result of millions of lines of code working in perfect harmony. So, the next time your PC boots, remember, you're witnessing a masterfully choreographed dance of firmware, bootloaders, kernels, and services working together to bring Linux to life.